Welcome back to Your 1230, the only podcast where our guests tell their story with the help of 12 questions in just 30 minutes. I'm your host, Mike Salitro, and today we are really excited to be speaking with Micah Nichols. Micah is a husband, father, and real estate entrepreneur in that order. Oh, and he's also the CEO and owner of US Lead List. Micah, welcome. We are really excited to be speaking with you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate you, Mike, for taking a minute to kind of hear my story. It's fun to fun to talk, and I'm not I'm not openly uh, sharing a lot about it. I'm I'm kind of a quiet guy and kind of s- stick back. So I appreciate you having me on. Of course, we'll check back in in 30 minutes and see if that's the uh, same way that you characterize yourself. Um, but with that bio, I, I want to start there. Uh, you obviously have a particular order that uh, you you uh, I don't want to say rank, but introduce yourself. So let's start. How did you how did you land on those three, and why that order? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that uh, every good thing starts from a strong foundation, and there's nothing more central in my life than my wife, my my best friend, my partner. And, uh, you know, it's easy to say those words, but, you know, marriage is hard, you know, it's like there, there's a, there's so many ways to, to mess something beautiful up. And, um, and so, you know, for me, like just kind of keeping, uh, you know, knowing, knowing where the flag is and knowing where I'm going. And that's been a consistent, um, I guess, uh, destination that I'm always pursuing a closeness to my wife, because that's what I'm doing everything else for. Um, you know, fatherhood, again, it's like, you know, I think it's a really close second to uh, my partnership with my wife. But again, being a father, it's hard, it's challenging, it's fraught with so many, you know, just multiples of different uh, possible points of failure. And, uh, and and we're always failing, right? And so you can always aspire to do better. Um and so for me, like, you know, in my life and what I've done and what I'm trying to do, I'm I'm trying to have everything else work for me so I can work the most for my wife and my family. I love that answer. There's a few things I want to follow up on, but first the uh, knowing where the flag is comment. I, I think that's uh, really, I'm going to say profound, but I think a lot of people miss that point that if you don't have a target or you don't have an anchor, you're okay with wherever you end up or wherever your uh, your efforts may lead. So how how do you translate? We both are in the real estate field. How do you translate that in, in, into, uh, into what you do as an entrepreneur working with real estate? Yeah, well, I mean, and I guess I'll, I'll also say that the I, I hope you don't hear my two and a half year old yelling in the background. We, I'm on vacation right now with my family. So, um, you know, I don't know if I'm just hard on myself, but, you know, I always see the gaps in where I could do better. I always, I'm always aspiring to try and just do better at the, the little opportunities that we have to show up for our kids, show up for our wives, show up for even a business opportunity. And that takes clarity of mind, having space to actually show up. And most, at least a lot of my peers are so busy, like they don't have time to actually even just show up, show up for other people, conversations, uh, to talk like, and, and, and listen, uh, to hear someone else's, uh, unique perspective, their, you know, their goals, whatever, whatever it might be. And, uh, so I think it's more than anything that that goal comes from a place of like wanting to have the ability to seize the moment and to not be busy. And and I'm only saying that because that's my biggest fault. Actually, I, I am all over the place. I, I am like a you know a bumblebee. I go to this flower. I go to that one. I you know fall over. I get up and I go try a different one. Um, but the the closer I can get to having less things and discipline to focus on fewer things, the more time I have to actually go deeper into the things that are really important. So with, with that showing up piece, I think that's important. That's, I don't want to say that's easy to say, but that makes common sense when, when you hear it. But I think, you know, just our day to day, we all know that that's 
uh, not the norm that there is you know, people rushing in a few minutes after a call starts or, you know, kind of just throwing things together. You know, what is this about? So how in practice can someone who's listening to this say, yeah, I would love to show up better. Just I, I can barely get through my day as it is. What's what's one or two things that person can start doing immediately to to kind of better show up? You know, it's funny, like one of the, one of the biggest changes in, in in my real estate business was when I changed the perspective of you know, trying to get what I want in any negotiation. And I just ask genuine questions that are usually open-ended. You know, folks can't answer yes or no. I just say, how's your day going? And then, you know, Mike, you say, oh, you know, it's been pretty good. I had this thing happen. I was like, oh, what happened? And and I just draw out um, basically people's life stories by that. So you you can get five questions deep usually, and you're at some pretty fundamental concepts of why this person's doing something, what they're doing it for, and they're they're touched in a way. And and like I said, this is quick. You know, five five questions. They're touched in a way because I'm listening thoughtfully to those questions. I'm asking something pertinent to whatever that was about, and I'm trying to get to a, a deeper understanding. I think that skill. Um, I, I I mean, it definitely got, I got better at it as I was doing more real estate negotiations just because in our minds uh, as investors or realtors, we're, we're always trying to figure out like what we can get from the scenario, right? And the problem with that is it's a two-way street. So you always apply that to the people that you're working with, right? So um, someone, you know, it has, there's no logical grounds for them to maybe sell you a, a property at a very significant you know, discount, right? But there's emotional grounds for it. There's logistical grounds. And you can't ever get to those, like that place. And, and I don't want to say leverage because it's, that, you know, that almost sounds like you're being manipulated because you're not, you're, you're actually trying to figure out what this person's real problem is and what the real solution is and, and to see if you can help. And if you can help, then it's a it's a win win scenario. Um, I think yeah, I, th I think the just really listening well, asking good questions, and caring, being empathetic. Um, and the other thing is just trying to find really good people to work with, better than you if you can. Um, and it's funny. I, I worked in restaurants for years and. Um, that was something that all of these, you know, really prosperous businessmen would always say to me. I, you know, I just candidly ask them, like, what, what do you owe most of your success to? And the ones that were humblest and I'm assuming had the most always said pretty much the same thing. I just worked really hard to find people who were better than me and I hired them. Um, and I'm not that far down that road, but, but I, I'll tell you that if you can multiply your efforts by finding people who are better than you are, um, that's a, a, that's a short path to exponential growth. I like that advice, you know, starting with the showing up piece that just simply caring about who you're showing up for, asking good questions, and then listening to those answers and building off them again, does not, does not sound all that difficult, but it doesn't happen very often. So when it's executed well, uh, the person on the other end feels heard and is more likely to speak speak candidly and, and as you talk about sometimes in negotiations it may not make sense on paper but you find that uh you know there's there's logistics or there's emotion that gets you to an outcome you wouldn't have had so i really like that and, and i want to follow up there on the um the kind of the uh attracting talent piece that work with people that are you know, talented ideally better than you um that's a that is again it sounds easy that's a really hard thing to uh, cultivate talent to collaborate. Uh, how how have you taken some of those lessons from from your time in restaurants or time in, in other roles to to what you're doing now and, and to building your team? Uh, I'm I'm going to borrow the words of a mentor of mine who told me, um, he's like, Micah, this is all you need to do. You know, we're all we're all uh, navigating the world around us every day. Uh, we're seeing a bunch of people. We're, we're you know making small exchanges. It's like anytime someone sticks out to you, you know their smile, their vibrance, their their exuberance for life, whatever it might be. Just say, hey, can I get your contact information? I don't know why or what for yet. I'm working on something. 
And, you know, maybe, maybe there's a way we can work together. So, you know, it could be, uh, you know, notes on your phone, just literally anything. And, you know, jot a couple, couple things down about that person, why you thought they were, they were great and what their, what their special talent might've been. And you do this for a little bit. And, you know, again, like I, I haven't been doing it that long. This is advice that was just recently given to me, but it really chimed, or I guess it, it, it followed in step with what, um, you know, those, those older, more successful people told me. It's like, you can see talent. People can see talent. People can tell. Uh, and, and, it, and it's just, you know, like, it's, um, what's that book? The Tipping Point. You know, your, your, your brain knows before you even know how to verbalize it. So you just, you spot that person and you're like, wow. Um, and who knows why uh, that, you know, that you could spend a lot of time unpacking that, but just trust, trust your intuition, uh, resolve to, to get the contact and, and go from there. That's, that's what I've done. And then, I mean, I think the other simple thing is, you know, when you surround yourself with good people, they're going to, bring other good people to you. And so it has a multiplying effect. Yeah, that, I, I, I like that, the multiplying effect, because you're right that generally if someone has been brought into your network or, or you've brought them into what you're doing and it's for the work they're doing, the person they are, they've likely cultivated something um, that either they've worked on in the past, they're currently working on, and not to again use that word leverage, but it's you can kind of very easily build up and, and multiply the efforts there. So I think that's that's really that's really good advice. And again, it sounds fairly straightforward, but it's difficult in practice. So I, I'm glad we we took some time covering that. I'm switching gears for a moment here. U.S. Lead List. What can you tell us about that? And when you do meet someone new, how do you explain what you do? Yeah, sure. Um, so the the simplest thing, you know, like. In, in our company, we have like one super, super power, something like we're just really, really good at. And that is aligning if someone passes away and if they own real estate. Um, and, you know, most people, they, their brain uh, goes to probate. Like that's the kind of the, that first leap, the easiest. Oh, yeah, probate leads. While that's true, there's there's a bunch of stuff that we do that's outside of strictly probate. I would say kind of four main buckets. Um, the first is, you know, surviving spouses. If someone passes away and they have a surviving spouse, that that doesn't go through probate. So that's something we work on that's not included in probate. The next is if it's in a trust. Similarly, um, assuming the lawyer is acting on the his client's best behalf, they won't necessarily probate that. And then uh, properties that have been, the, the, you know, the titles transferred before a death. Um, so all three of those scenarios are outside of probate and those are part of what we do. And then the last component actually is probate, but we're basing our, you know, our connection point is death and real estate. And so it's not the legal proceedings that the, that legal process of probate. So typically when we're generating our data um, and, and, you know, records around this, it's uh, pre-probate. It's before the filings have been uh, started. Is that is that a good kind of basis? Should I elaborate more? Well, I'll I'll hopefully give you a follow up that will help elaborate. So, are are you working with the families of of the people that have passed away? Is there uh, an intermediary, or who is who are you working with? So, at you know at at, at a company level, what we provide is literally just that data connection. So, like we're basically a, a data aggregator. And logistically, what that looks like is every month we build a national file. So there's 3,200 counties across the U.S. We build a file for any properties that kind of meet those conditions across the U.S. And we, um, you know, kind of sell that on a subscription basis to realtors, brokers, investors, wholesalers, kind of the whole, you know, real estate genre, if you will. So we're, yeah, we're not specifically talking to them. We're not doing any of the outreach yet. You know, I, I do that with my own company. I use our own data for our own you know, real estate business, but um, that basically we're, we're helping coach and helping get people the most, uh, I guess, the largest opportunity that they can have on, on this like scenario, because 
you know, when you're looking at properties that go through probate, or sorry, even I did it there. Um, when when someone passes, uh, you know, the prop if they own property, there's about a 50% chance that they're going to sell that or transfer title within about two years. Um, and so, I mean, this is just an evergreen place to find deals. And if you can find a way to tastefully do it, and again, this kind of goes back to our earlier conversation where you're actually helping people, you're listening, you're, you're working with them. Um, it, can, it can make you uh, a, a really successful investor, uh, you know, whatever your take is on real estate. So I'm glad you put tastefully in there because I think that when you get into the topic of you know lucrative real estate deal and someone passing away, that not only there's the opportunity for um, unsavory behavior, there is things that are done that are probably not done well and not done in the interest of of the right parties here. Um, so how do you ensure that happens, and why is that important to you? Uh, you know. I I, I guess first I'll start by saying, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a God fearing man. Um, I, and two, I, I just, I genuinely care for people. Um, you know, I didn't come with a silver spoon. I, I didn't have much like, you know, I'm, I'm one of seven and my, my basically, you know, the, my formative years, anything that I wanted, I had to create for myself. And, um, and so, you know, I kind of know the difference between, you know, doing well and, and not well. And so showing up in a way where you're actually getting to what people want and having, you know, just taking the time, listening well enough and having them tell you what you need. And the hardest thing in this whole thing is actually there's so many raging emotions that like they don't always know what they need. And so you have to be careful because yeah, you can, you, I mean, there's, there's a way that you could go in and, and manipulate people and work them over. Um, but for me, it, again, it, it, you know, we already kind of went through my path. Like <clears throat> I asked folks like just, Hey, what's going on? What's the situation here? And they tell me their husband died. They tell me their sister died. Got it. I'm so sorry. You know, I just, I just genuinely, you know, acknowledge their pain and respond to that. And, you know, I, I basically show up in a way where I'm just like seeing if I can help them get what they want. And if that works, then, you know, or if it doesn't, that's okay. Like I just say, Hey, I, I don't know how to, to like, like, I'm not pretending I like, I do this for a business. I'm, I'm making money, but I, I can't make money with this scenario. And, um, sometimes that changes. Sometimes they, they move to a, a, you know, you know, they, they kind of pivot and they're like, well, I do what I like you and I want to work with you. Is there another way? And so, you know, and, and as you get kind of deeper into the real estate rabbit hole, you know, it's just, there's so many ways, right? There's so many tools that you can have in your tool belt to, to make a deal work. And, um, and that's where it gets fun. It's like, if people actually, if you show up in a way where they actually understand that you care and you're trying to help, then you you genuinely do get to help people, and you're also getting to you know make a, make a great living. Um, yeah, uh, the, for example, this um, we did a um, uh, we bought it four acres in a town close to me, and it was um it's a it, you know, four no sorry three houses, but they're all very dilapidated rough houses, and uh, but it was a perfect development site. This guy, you know, knew it was valuable. And, um, and again, he's just like that, you know, the whole process is just like, well, I'm, I'm first, first thing is I'm donating 10 of this, 10% of this to the church. He's like, I'm tithing, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give it to them. I'm going to make good with God on this. And I was like, I totally respect that. I'm like, so where are we at? And I literally, I, I door knocked this guy. I called him. I showed up to his house, uh, you know, multiple times. Finally, we got to a place where it was like, this is what he wanted. He, and he was just trying to, you know, hold his cards close to his chest. Can't blame him. Um, so we got him to the price where he wanted. And we did all the entitlement for the, the, the multifamily. We designed the building, yada, yada. And then sold it to an end developer. And we made great money. But this guy all along the way got exactly what he wanted. And it's just working within the parameters of what's in front of you. 
in kind of allegiance to the, the people who you care about. And, and frankly, I, I mean, I care about who I do business with. So that's, a, that's, that's ethical. And, and so, you know, I, I, I can't do that for other people, but that's what I do for myself. That, that's a very illustrative story, kind of just highlighting the importance of, as we said, being being tactful in a situation where it can be difficult for the parties involved, uh, being you know caring about the the outcomes as as well as those individuals, and then doing it in a way where it it is for the benefit of of everyone involved and kind of increasing the pie as opposed to just getting your own. I really I really like when we first spoke. That was kind of what jumped out at me, and kind of similarly. Uh, how did you get started with the U.S. Lead List? Was this something that you cultivated from the beginning? Because I found this story kind of incredible too. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I um, yeah, I kind of alluded to the fact that, like, you know, my, my family, we were just dirt poor. You know, one of seven. I was one of the middle kids. You know, sometimes, you know, my parents left without me. Uh, they're just like, you know, totally by mistake. They're like, oh. Wait, wait, hold on. Mike, Mike is not in here. That's a problem. Um, and uh, yeah, we, you know, we just, uh, I, I kind of grew up in, in a um, economic scenario, like I said, where I had to do, uh, you know, the work, find, find a way for myself uh, to get what I wanted, mostly by my own volition. My first paying job was I used to worm. I, I would put these like, I'm sure, I'm so, totally sure they're, they're illegal, but they, uh, you'd plug this thing into the wall, they're like electrodes you'd put into the ground and then you'd get the ground wet. And so it would saturate the soil and it would electrify the worms. And then you'd go and you, you know, you'd, you'd pick them, collect them. And then I would sell them to a bait farm in this little hodunk town in, in Idaho. Um, anyway, uh, I got, I deviated there. Sorry. Um, but yeah, we, no apology we, we, needed. I, uh, I, uh, so I had kids really young. I met my wife uh, and I, I just always loved kids. I, I wanted to be around them. So wow, my first kid was born when I was 22. We had three successive kids over six years. Um, and uh, so that put me at a place of, you know, kind of just, you know, having a lot to work for. But all the while, like I, you know, throughout my education, throughout most of my life, I've always been kind of a, a square peg when there was a round hole available. School was hard for me. Um, I just, I just never found it very easy to get in line. And so I, yeah, I, I, I had so many businesses. I had so many jobs. I've done so many weird things. But uh, in 2015, I, I bought my first four unit. It was a I think it grossed like 1,820 bucks and I bought it for $52,000 in this little town in Wisconsin. It was a good deal, you know, as far as you're penning out a, a, a little, a little deal goes. And then a month later, the same broker who sold me it, he's like, Hey, I have this other, you know, little pocket listing. It's a five unit. It makes 3,200. And I, and the guy wants, I, whatever, I, I can't, I, I bought it for 90. Um, and, um, and so I bought those two and I just kind of did the good work. I managed them myself. I, I repaired them all myself. Uh, all the while I'm working at restaurants, trying to just provide my, for my family and, and get by. I mean, literally getting by just barely. And, um, and then during COVID, I was just kind of like watching the, you know, the, the economics. And one of the things I stumbled onto was that the government was giving away tons of free money for mergers and acquisitions that, you know, I don't know if they thought it was going to be a, you know, the next black swan, but you know, basically they would pay your, your SBA loan for six months. They waived the SBA fee. They, they were doing all of this stuff. So it was like, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars up to you know, half a million dollars um, that they were literally just giving you if you were to buy a business in this time period. And uh, I was looking around, I'm like, man, I, maybe I should just pivot. Maybe I just need to, like, I'm working. I, at that time, I had a, a overhead door construction business that I was running. So I was, like, grinding. Uh, but I had hurt my back. And so I literally couldn't get out of bed. So all of COVID, uh, when everyone was in lockdown, I was just vet vetting businesses. I, I looked at 
over a hundred, hundred different businesses. I just like trying to find something that fit, that made sense that, that I could do um, just all in hopes to kind of, you know, elevate my, myself out of the, the place where I was at financially. Um, and uh, finally, I stumbled across U.S. Leadless. Uh, the, the two guys who I bought it from, they're great dudes. They're in their 70s, just ready to retire, done with it, you know, wanted to go and, you know, you know buy their property on the beach in California. And, uh, but I was looking at the business. I'm like, man, this is like, this is all data. This is all like, you know, automatable things. And these guys, they're, they're doing it from paper. Like if, if I could just insert myself into this business, create some automation, you know, you do this, do that. Um, I mean, literally they were taking orders by paper. It was, it was silly. Um, and uh, I was like, man, there's a lot of upside here. So it was, it was kind of both. It was, you know, the time upside that I was able to create, but then also the, all the benefits the, the government gave me. And uh, I, I actually sold those two properties that I was talking about. I, I traded in all my equity, sold them actually to a friend and bought uh, with all those proceeds, the business. And I've been operating it for the last three and a half years. Very nice. I, I wrote down the 3,200 counties because I didn't realize there was, I mean, obviously there's, there's a lot, but I didn't realize there was that many because I remember the paper part and I was just thinking back to them actually trying to keep up with all that information and keep that all straight. Yeah. So um, I could talk automations all night, but I will not do that. Um, what I do want to do is kind of, we're already nearing time somehow. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about building strong teams, working, working diligently, working hard, doing the right things in our business. Um, you know, if someone's listening to this and like, you know, Mike, you've got, a, you've got, you're at a great place. You've been able to, to use your experience to, to get you where you are. I'd like to get there someday, but I don't know the next thing to do, or I'm not sure um, how I can, you know, leave my okay situation for a better one. Is there, you mentioned having a mentor. Is there any advice you give someone who might be looking up to, to take a step into what you're, what you're doing or where, where you have been? Yeah. I mean, uh, was it Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger? One of those guys said that, you know, the first hundred thousand is the hardest. And I found that absolutely to be true, to, to put away um, your hard-earned money, to not spend now, to invest later, to, to do that. You know, that took me, gosh, 12 years of, you know, my, my working life to do. And, um, and so I think having, uh, having the persistence and diligence to like sacrifice later for the things that you want right now. I think that's one of the most important things. And then I think the other part is that, you know, I got used to doing this really early, but just burning, burning the bridges of what you don't want in, in hearty pursuit of what you do. Um, the longer that you limp and try and saddle both, the more you're going to be dragged down. That's, that's such great advice because that kind of takes us full circle of where we started this of, uh, you know, knowing where the flag is, knowing what's important to you, having that foundation with with your family, with your wife, making sure that you have that right partnership and then understanding here's what's important to me. Here's when I put my focus, my time, my energy and these other things, if they're not contributing to uh, those outcomes or those results, I can limit or eliminate them altogether. So it's really wonderful how you've tied that together. Um, before I let you go, anything I didn't ask you that I probably should have? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I, uh, this has been so fun. Uh, I feel like I could have talked a lot longer, actually. Um, no, I, I had zero agenda coming in. I, uh, I just, you know, we, we met briefly before this and I genuinely liked uh, your personality and your particular perspective on the world. And, and uh, I was just excited to, to talk to you, you know, your, your audience about what, what it is I do. Yeah, no, I, I don't think you missed anything. I think that if folks, uh, you know, wanted to reach out or something, I'd, I'd happily uh, uh, connect at any point. And I'm pretty, you know, I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, all those places. But um, yeah, no, I, I just, I, I, I have a, I have a heart for people who want to change their lives with good work. And um, that's not, a, that's not, you know, it's easy to say, not easy to do, like you mentioned a couple of times earlier. And so I'm always advocating for folks helping helping when I can. 
I love it. We'll post the uh, Facebook and LinkedIn um, links into the show notes. So anyone who wants to connect with Micah, please do that there. Uh, you're right. We could certainly have this conversation uh, keep going. So we will have you back later to keep uh, to get an update on uh, what, what is new and going on and uh, to, to continue the conversation. But Micah, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this has been a blast and uh, I do look forward to doing it again. 